and welcome to Green Investing. I'm Justin Eckert Stewart of Seven Investment Management, and today we're going to look at the Green New Deal. Well, President Obama has embraced the idea of a green stimulus package, pledging some $150 billion of investment in low carbon infrastructure in order to create jobs. Gordon Brown has also espoused a Green New Deal. In his case, it's to also boost employment with eco friendly transport and renewables at the heart of his strategy. So are we going to see a rush to green investing? After all, the returns last year were relatively poor, and if business takes the money, will it be able to actually deliver the reduction in CO2 emissions that the world is now demanding? Well, to help find out, I'm joined by Henry Boucher, head of Saras Sustainable Investment at Saracen, and Anne McIver, editor of Cleantech magazine. Well, Henry, what are we going to make of all of this uh, proposals from Obama then? Well, I think it's really good news. Um, we've seen an enormous change in policy now by America. They've uh, basically adopted the same approach now that we've seen in Europe for a number of years. They're going to hopefully go for an 80% cap in carbon emissions by 2050, which requires an enormous change of attitude from the American government. We've seen the states within America um, already taking a lead, such as California, but now to have the whole nation behind it will make an enormous difference, I think, particularly when we get to Copenhagen um, in December at the end of this year. And what happens at Copenhagen? Well, Copenhagen really is the, the next stage of the Kyoto Treaty, which expires in 2012. And if you're going to plan long-term reductions in carbon emissions, we really do need to know what's going to happen beyond 2012. So for everybody involved, this is an absolutely critical discussion to unite, hopefully, all the world's major nations in this uh, carbon reduction programme. So what sort of sectors and areas are going to be affected by this? Well, I think we shouldn't rush to assume that there'll be an instant reaction to this um, new um, Obama team. I think he's got a very good, strong team with um, Stephen Chu, for instance, who's the new energy secretary, is himself a, a physicist, a Nobel Prize winning physicist indeed. So he has a particular interest in the, the, the overall science factor. And I think um, you know, some of the scientific and technological areas, in particular um, the solar energy and indeed other forms of renewable fuels, will be high on the administration agenda. So we can expect action there. But I suspect that some of the simple technologies are really going to be the things that see the increased spending in the next year or two. So things as simple as insulation. OK. Uh, Anne, with all of this and the fall in oil price now, do you think this is actually going to be, have less chance of being pushed through because the oil price come down so much? Who's going to care quite as much? Um, I think the, the fall in the oil price... It's, it's going to mean that um, some of the big projects, I mean, we've seen recently that the London Array is looking at, at, at quite tricky to, you know, in terms of financing. Um, some of the bigger project financing thing might, might actually become pushed out for a little bit. But I think you know, what you'll see is you're seeing oil companies investing in renewable energy, in, in solar energy, in renewable fuels, I mean, algae investment, that, you know, companies like Shell investing in algae. Um, BP's investing in solar in a really big way. Um, these guys are already there uh, in terms of the renewable side of things. And what do you think the Obama package is going to really deliver in the green area? Which areas do you think we should be focusing on? Um, I think what you'll see, I mean, as we've just discussed, the, the appointments of people like Stephen Chu and also the appointment of Lisa Jackson as administrator of the EPA, um, this is likely to mean that we're going to see um, the US adopting cap and trade very quickly. Now, explain how that works. Um, well, cap and trade is, is capping your carbon emissions, and um, companies which em emit too much carbon, too much CO2, they can trade that um, through exchanges such as the Chicago Tri Climate Exchange, which already trades on, on a voluntary basis. Now, there's, that's been talked about for a while. How significant do you think that is now, and do you think it's going to grow a great deal? I think actually, well, Copenhagen again will, will be quite significant in terms of the, the global carbon markets, and we'll know towards the end of this year. Um, but obviously everyone will be looking towards that um, to see whether we're going to, um, well, looking at the, the, the renewable energies which can offset the carbon, which can, can, can replace the, the old fossil fuel generation. Okay. Although, having said that, you'll also see investment in things like clean coal um, and, and some sort of alternative uh, traditional types right. of, of energy as well. Henry, one of the issues we've got, obviously, we're in recession. So what's actually going to make sure that we don't lose all this goodwill we've got towards uh, sustainable issues now on the basis of going into recession, everyone's just going to be fighting for survival, we'll deal with the ethical issues later? Well, as far as many of the share prices are concerned, we've lost a huge amount of goodwill. I mean, we've seen a collapse in, to be honest, some of the, the darling stocks, the solar stocks in the last year. I mean, some are down 80%. Um, and I think part of that is that there was a lot of profit to be taken and they were 
perhaps overrated some of them, but they're now down at very cheap valuations as long as they can finance their businesses. And this is really a function of the recession. It's, it's still the credit crunch issue. But and there is that, credit rationing, I think, for a lot of these businesses. Well, does that mean then they're going to have to come back for more capital? And if so, is that going to be available? Well, I think there are two things. Firstly, have, are they able to finance their own businesses? Sure. Because they don't necessarily have strong cash flows at this point. They're in the sort of high growth phase of their business. Um, the second point is government subsidy. And is that going to continue? Because governments clearly everywhere are strapped for cash. So I think that combination of factors has meant everyone's very nervous of the sector, and that's why it's been pushed down quite as far as it has. So what's your recommendation to investors then? Do they should hold off for the moment and wait till it goes down even lower? Well, I think if you believe that this is definitely going to happen, if we're looking out towards 2050, um, this stands out as a potentially tremendous buying opportunity because you, know, you don't get this combination of negative factors very often in a high growth sector. Um, I think there are issues about overcapacity in some industries, particularly, say, solar panels. Um, but if you, you're careful and you pick your way through, and indeed you diversify your way across the range of different um, potential new energies, I think you've got a really exciting buying opportunity. Okay. And from your point of view, I mean, this recession could significantly impact uh, what's going to happen here. Could you actually see in various projects just being abandoned altogether? It, that might happen, but having said that, I mean, that will also apply to, for example, some of the oil projects. I mean, some of the less economic oil projects, such as tar sands and things, which, which environmentalists have been very concerned about, um, may also have to be abandoned for economic reasons. What about energy security? Where do you think this, that fits into all of this? Energy security has been an issue in the US even before the Obama um, election, um, and in fact it was something that Bush was, was quite keen on. Um, you've seen sectors such as ethanol um, from corn, which, which some environmentalists are, are somewhat critical of. Um, so it's that, that type of sector has been in favour under Bush, although it has fallen out of favour recently. Any particular sector tips you want to share with us now? Uh, well, I, mean, I think the carbon trading companies, I mean, certainly so companies like Climate Exchange in the UK, which owns the, the, the Chicago Climate yeah. Exchange. Um, also, one of the, the interesting areas is going to be the transmission, upgrading of trans the, the electricity transmission. You get um, big solar arrays out in the desert, which need to, which, I mean, if, if the solar um, investment takes place, we're right. going to have to somehow get that electricity moved over to where it's needed in the cities. And you could see big investment by companies, or you will see big investment in the transmission um, and also smart grid. Um, Obama has, has, looked, has, has fixed on the smart grid. I think he's, he's right. ring-fenced a billion dollars for smart grid investment, which could be interesting. Okay. And Henry, what about, uh, what sort of directions would you push us in now? Well, I think you've got to look not only at the obvious sectors, but I think you've got to look within sectors. I think there can be some very interesting changes, particularly as government regulation tightens up. To get to these targets in 2050, they're going to have to set us some quite tough rules. And I think if you look at um, some of the industries that are under stress now as a result of the recession, take the property sector, where you've got um, voids beginning to appear, you've got unlet property. Um, if you think of it from the perspective of the tenant moving into those properties, they've got the choice perhaps of going into a very nice eco-efficient new building mm -hmm. or into an old building which isn't particularly environmentally friendly. I think there'll be a lot of pressure within, for instance, the um, property sector to change to a more environmentally friendly approach. Okay, Henry. Henry Boucher and Anne McIver, thank you very much indeed for joining me this afternoon. Thank you also for watching. Until next time, good luck with your green investing and goodbye from me, Justin Urquhart-Stewart. Goodbye.